Now we're ready to do next to the last phase. The book has been completely sewn. One thing I didn't mention, when you come to the last signature, you simply tie it off. A simple knot, a double knot is fine. Don't worry about it. Again, everything's going to be encased in uh, modern adhesive, very strong, very permanent. Nothing's going to happen to it. And it's not going to be in, under any tension. As you noticed, by the way, uh, when we were making the knots to join uh, one piece to the next, I used about six pieces of thread in the sewing of this particular book, uh, modest length for convenience. There was only one knot that wound up on the outside. You see, it does make a small dimple on the outside. Between this and that, in the process of backing, uh, that dimple should be non-existent by the time we actually put the spine on. So don't worry about it. Don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, the overlap of the uh, cords, uh, sorry, the uh, tapes, cloth tapes, uh, sufficient to adequately be attached permanently to the boards themselves. We'll get to that later in the final stage, the assembly. Now, we have kept the original rounding of the spine. It's got additional swell because it's got additional thread in it. The thread I used is actually probably a bit uh, marginally thinner than the original thread. However, when publishers would have books sewn, it was hand sewn of course, at any rate, uh, there were methods. Everyone was doing this for a living, so any labor-saving, any time-saving uh, idea that came along would be adapted. As long as you wound up with a reasonably uh, su substantive uh, binding. One of the uh, labor-saving devices in this book, for example, you had three cords fine. Every time a signature was sewn, you didn't go up and over all three uh, cords. As it turned out, half the signatures had two cords covered and, uh, sorry, for example, these two cords, alternate signatures would have these two cords covered. The swell should be about the same, uh, and of course, it's not uh, a redundant uh, configuration of thread as this is. In minimalist sewing, let's call it, you do have the kettle stitching, that's fine, holding everything top and bottom as long as the thread holds, uh, but you have these cords not the strongest material, and the thread, not the strongest thread, uh, and not even all completely uh, sewn on every signature. So if a loop is, is, uh, fails on the inside of the book, or on the outside for that matter, uh, you could easily have an entire signature come loose, and etc. So at any rate, we've kept the original uh, rounding. I'm going to take ball peen hammer. Now there are specialist hammers. This is my old favorite. I like the rounded uh, peen on this one because we had to reinforce the first and last signatures. Uh, in the process of doing that, as you will recall, we had to flatten the signature out. Uh, so that by nature lost its curve and it's the sharpest curve of the whole book because it's right at the what they call the shoulder so it would be good if we could re-encourage that shoulder in rounding any book even remedial work like this 
cannot emphasize enough how important patience is. It's not going to happen within a minute. You have to keep nuancing. The books uh, usually describe this procedure as glancing blows. You never want to, uh, and there are more taps than blow, blows, you never want to uh, push your luck and apply any great pressure. That's actually not bad right there. It's certainly improved the shoulder, the sharpness of the shoulder. Now once this is glued, but it will hold its shape. Now we'll turn this around. I'll talk briefly while I'm doing this last shoulder. I'll talk briefly about the laying press. This is homemade, one of two I have. The laying press as opposed to the standing press. Standing press is simply used to apply direct pressure to a book, uh, typically used after a book is all done and it goes in the press to complete drying and uh, there are other functions, but basically it's just pressure. You can achieve much the same effect by putting some nice smooth flat surface, rigid surface over your books, uh, under and over your books, and then putting uh, 20 pounds of, uh, or actually 30 to 40 pounds would be uh, more appropriate, uh, over your books to press them while they dry and leave them for a couple days and then you're good. They are called standing presses. This is called a laying press. Very basic. Uh, in this case, wooden screws, but um, you can make your own wide variety. The main function is to free up both hands. Otherwise, you would be impossibly trying to hold everything rigid and in place while you do all this work on uh, the uh, spine surface, uh, the backing process. At any rate, let me get back to this. To the sewing, I double checked the alignment on the top edge, uh, double checked the general roundness, manipulated it before I put pressure on it to get it as close to even or symmetric as I could. And then I uh, locked it up in the press. I'm not going to spend much more time on this. It's more a nicety than anything. It'll give a cleaner edge when we go to attach the boards. There, we'll call that good. Now, basically what we're about to do, I have cut a piece of unbleached cotton unbleached only because um, it's uh, stronger, it doesn't have bad things in it to speak of. Uh, it's also referred to as muslin, I believe. Uh, although muslin, I believe, is tends to be thicker than this stuff, so maybe this might be referred to as light muslin. Anyhow, you don't want a thick cloth, you want a high thread count cloth, uh, as you see, this is standard. Uh, in my opinion, far stronger, far superior to mull. Mull is a, a think of a high, think of mull as a high thread count cheesecloth, which is fine. It's certainly thin, uh, but the actual number of threads along the hinge that are going to flex over the years and take the stress of flexing back and forth. Um, if it doesn't make any difference aesthetically, I'll go with the stronger material. I've also cut a piece of uh, craft paper uh, to size, more or less. Yes, that's to size. Uh, it's oversized because it's going, when you uh, put this on a glued surface uh, at the very end to cover everything, uh, 
it's going to start expanding immediately because of the moisture. So I don't bother cutting it exactly to uh, length anymore. I simply make sure one end is exactly where I want it in the gluing process. Glue the rest of it and wherever it stops, I then fold it back and cut it, uh, thereby assuring both ends are exactly where I want them, if you follow that. So we have our cloth, we have our cover paper at the very end, and finally, but not in order of application, we have our new headbands. You will recall the original ones were about two-thirds that width. These are well-made, uh, machine-made, but still, they're well-made. Um, and the original was blue and white, this is blue and white, so we're in keeping with the, the original premise. These will go on first, as a matter of fact. So we begin. We need to apply a thin coat of polyvinyl acetate. I use straight. What some people insist on is first pasting on a layer of thin Japanese tissue. These, this stuff comes in sheets, so uh, I cut it into strips, so it's not a problem getting, uh, uh, cutting a nice long piece of Japanese tissue. The theory is it acts as a barrier between the actual text block paper and the permanent adhesive stuff you're about to put on the book. All of this in keeping with the principle of reversibility, which is a keystone of serious restoration work. You really shouldn't do anything to a book or to anything that can't be undone in the future. This uh, polyvinyl acetate adhesive is not supposed to be water soluble, but of course it is. If you um, put moisture on it and let it set for a while, it will soften. You won't be able to remove it entirely, that's true. Not that big a deal in my opinion. Also, since this is the very crooks of the long-term stability of the spine or the binding structure, it's really important, I think, to make this as strong as possible and as uh, long-lived as possible. So, it's my feeling using straight PVA right on the spine is appropriate and certainly forgivable. It's the only exception to the reversibility rule, almost the only exception I ever make. So, having said all that, I'm going to apply PVA. I just don't want it to run, that's all. Now, I could use a brush. For years, I did use a brush. I then couldn't find a brush uh, after I put the glue on, etc., and I used my fingertip. Uh, out of necessity, out of panic actually, and I found I could get a much better coverage. I could really work. Notice I always go out on the edges. You don't want to draw in because that will simply uh, put excess on the uh, top of the book where you don't want it. At any rate, using my fingertip, I found it was at least as fast, and I'm convinced it really works the, uh, the adhesive down into every nook and cranny, especially the exposed threads over the over the uh, sewn tapes. I'm going by sense of feel on the far side. Normally I would do this process below grade as it were so I could see the entire top surface. 
I'm in this somewhat awkward position due to the cameras. I hope everything is in frame. And we'll need just a little more down here, and then we'll be done. Now, this is the initial coat. Afterwards, and it's a, a thin sheen. I mean, there's no excess uh, to speak of. Uh, another nice thing about using your finger, you can apply pressure where pressure is most needed and make sure you just have a thin sheen. Excess is, is just messy. It's just... Uh, problematic in any uh, aspect of bookbinding. If you can't accomplish what you need to accomplish with a thin sheen of, for example, polyvinyl acetate, then there's something wrong. This thin sheen of polyvinyl acetate is going to accomplish exactly the same thing as a quarter inch of polyvinyl acetate is going to accomplish. You're only interested in what hits the paper surface, that's all. There you go. It's as straightforward as that. Now we've got our base coat, let's call it. We will now apply the headbands, I simply put them on roughly, just stick them on, and then, uh, of course, it goes without saying, this side will never be seen, so that's the blank side. This side is the show side. That goes towards the viewer and away from the spine per se. Now to properly position these I have to do this quickly before it sets. Now more PVA goes on top of the headband cloth thereby encasing the whole thing in serious adhesive when that dries, that's, it's going to be a big deal for that to come off, especially since it's adhered directly to the clean paper surface of the text block. Now that we have our base coat on and the Headbands attached, top and bottom. We now put on another coat. Make sure this coat doesn't get anywhere near drying. Tacky is fine, but beginning to dry out is something we want to avoid because the next layer that goes on this is the cloth. We want to ensure there is 
really good adhesion between polyvinyl acetate and the cloth. It's possible anytime you want to extend the set time of whatever adhesive you're using it's possible to just take a little wheat flour paste and cut it with the paste that will depending on the ratio you use of course that will substant can substantially increase your set time thereby giving you ample opportunity to cover a large surface for example or do anything else that uh, might be dictated that will require extra extra time now to be on the safe side I wasn't that neat in applying this I'm going to take some sheets of scrap paper, put them under.